Lael Brainerd, National Economic Council Director and former Federal Reserve Vice Chair, joins us now first on CNBC. It's great to see you, Director Brainerd. Welcome. How surprised are you by these strong numbers at this point in the cycle? Well, I think the data that we saw this morning uh, really confirms 2023 was a great year for the U.S. economy. The uh, economy entered uh, 2023 uh, with a lot of strength in the labor market, and it carried that strength all the way through to the end of the year. So we are up 2.7 million jobs over the course of 2023 more than the best year of the previous administration. And that took place at a time where the unemployment rate uh, was consistently below 4% throughout the year. And inflation, uh, core inflation, came down close to that uh, pre-pandemic benchmark of 2% over a six-month basis. So that's a really uh, very healthy economic picture. And what adds to it is that wage growth ticked up for the month of December. I mentioned the 4.1% from the 4%. But does that make you a little bit nervous? Because we know the Fed has been trying to target inflation, and wage growth certainly plays into that, that it's going to be hard to do this last mile down to 2% target. Well, I think you will find that uh, President Biden uh, will always uh, take a healthy wage growth number. Um, and this is just very good news for American workers. Uh, wages are growing. Uh, their purchasing power is actually up because wages have uh, exceeded uh, on a uh, price-adjusted basis, uh, have grown over the course of the year, over the course of the administration overall. But what does that reflect? It reflects uh, productivity growth, over 2 percent productivity growth over the previous year. Uh, and inflation is actually coming down, uh, core uh, inflation down to that 2 percent range on a six-month basis. So that's a, that's a very uh, good picture for American workers, the American economy. But, you know, financial conditions have loosened a lot over the last month on hopes that the Fed is going to start cutting rates. And it does make you wonder, especially when you see mortgage rates drop and the stock market up, whether we're going to have stickier inflation or, or potentially another flare up in inflation after all the progress that's been made so far. How, how do you assess the risk of that? You know, I think we just got the numbers on the supply chain uh, index, uh, and that shows that supply chains are actually all the way back down uh, to normal pre-pandemic conditions. So biggest drop uh, in supply chain pressures, I think, that we've ever seen uh, from very, very elevated levels. That is really what's been driving inflation. Uh, and that's why you see that that core has come into the 2 percent range much faster than a lot of forecasters expected. So I think uh, the picture is, uh, is much better balanced than any forecaster had predicted just a year ago. We're seeing those wage gains on the back of strong productivity. But, but, but the inflation is not in the supply chain as much or the goods sector. Now it's in services, right? And, and it's in housing as well. Yeah, but, those, are, those are the sticky parts. Yeah, so I think in terms of um, the core inflation numbers, uh, we did see those coming down last month to 2% on a six-month basis. So that includes... Uh, and is very focused on services. So even there, we're seeing progress. Housing, as you know, um, we have uh, new rental numbers that had been coming down. Those haven't fully shown through to average rentals, but of course, we're going to keep focusing on housing affordability, a huge issue for Americans, really important to continue working on that.